get a lot of questions about what setting should I use. I need to cut some eighth inch plywood or some quarter inch plywood or three millimeter or whatever. You know, what setting should I use for my laser? Well, this depends on your laser, what brand you have, what type of material it is, how many watts the head is. And the best thing to do is to do a test grid. And what I'm going to do in this video is just grab a few different lasers and do exactly the same grid on each laser and give a little bit of a comparison. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And as I mentioned in the introduction there, I'm going to be burning some test grids on a few different lasers. I'm just going to grab ones, whatever ones that are handy. Uh, right now, sitting in front of me on the table here, and I've already burned this one, is a longer B1, which is a 33 to 36 watt laser on it which is obviously much more powerful than a 5 watt. So when I get asked, you know, what setting should I use for, you know, like uh, one of my more popular beginner laser projects is the welcome sign. And I do have some settings in the light burn files that are, can be downloaded. And I believe that one was set up for a 10 watt laser. So if you have a 30 watt laser, a 20 watt laser, a 5 watt laser, you're going to need to do some tests to find out what settings you need to use in power and speed to make those cuts. Um, some other things that come into mind that are important are whether or not you have air assist. If you have air assist, you can use, generally use a lower power, a little bit faster speed. And a honeycomb board underneath, which helps as it cuts, as there's some place for the smoke and soot to go, and it's not right down onto a plate. It also reduces scorching. So what I'm going to do here first, since I already have this one made and burned, is I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of this template that I use. And I've made it big. I don't usually do test grids this large, but I wanted to be able to show this in detail. So maybe you have a project and, you know, you, or you have an order and you need to make like a bunch of cows. This is cut out of uh, this three millimeter Dollar Tree shapes that you can buy for a buck and a quarter, no longer a dollar. But you can get quite a few of them out of one of these, and I could probably still get a couple more out of this, but that's all I needed for this particular project. How did I come up with this setting? Let's cut on this laser. I'll show you. Okay, here's the grid as it was cut on the board. And I have a honeycomb board underneath this, and it was with air assist. So as you can see, a lot of pieces just fell out. Give it a little tap here. Okay, something sticking. So if we look at the back, you can see where some of it like almost cut through, but didn't quite make it. So how does this work? This is the longer B1. So you can also look at, you know, if you have any scorching on here, as you got into these slower speeds and higher power, there's a little bit of scorching even though there was air assist. This is not scorching here, this is just a coloration in the wood. So I like to do this, and when I pick it up, it's whatever falls out, or when I just give a little tap falls out, I don't actually push any of these out. That way it gives me a good idea of what I can use for settings and speed. For example, if I wanted to do this as quick as possible on a project, I could use 900 millimeters per minute at 100% power. I could also go all the way down here and use 20% power at 100 millimeters per minute. But this is a type of chart that is very, very useful for your material. And I'm going to be making this on some other lasers, and I'll show you how I do it here. Okay, the next one I'm going to be running is going to be on the Ortura Laser Master 3 with a 20-watt head. I also have it with a 10-watt head. And we're going to run this one here with a 20-watt head on it. And I've modified the file a little bit to put a name at the top of exactly what it is. So we'll get this one here started. It takes about 22 minutes to run this file. I'm using absolute coordinates, I'm starting from center, have air assist on, and there is a honeycomb bed underneath this piece of 8 inch plywood. So we'll get this started, and we'll get this one laid out. So as you can see here at the uh, lighter power settings of 10 and 20 percent, it just barely makes a line. But we'll see how much power we're going to need 
cut this as it progresses up through and it'll show on the chart per se. Of course I'm not going to video the entire cut on this, that would be 22 minutes of just sitting here. Just showing you this here to give you an idea on how this runs. Okay, so the one for the Ortur LM3 is finished. Wrap this a little bit in case anything needs to fall out. So, there's what we have. There's the back side, as you can see. Some of these are close, but not all the way through. So, my next one will be the X-Tool D1. I'll get that one set up. Okay, this is on the X-Tool D1. Same file. I did uh, modify the graphics slightly to make it run a little bit quicker. This is a 10 watt laser. So we'll get this one started. Of course this starts from the upper left corner whereas all the other lasers start from the lower left corner but uh, it's not hard to get used to. So we'll let this run and then we'll move on to yet another laser. Okay, the x D1 is finished, so I'll send that home. Get it head out of the way. Again, I did a little tap in there to knock the loose ones out. This is on a 10 watt laser. Next up is going to be the Atom Stack. A30 Pro, that'll be a 30 watt. I'll get that one set up. Okay, this is the Atom Stack Maker A30 Pro 30 watt laser. Air assist is on, and I have a, it's basically a honeycomb board, but it's Atom Stack's cutting board that uh, is resting underneath the plywood. So we'll let this one run. Well, I'm going to have to abort this one and start over. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the boxes are off. What happened was one of them little pieces dropped down into uh, the cutting board underneath it since it's not an actual honeycomb. Stuck up, the head caught it, and it shifted the whole thing. So I'm going to have to start this one over. I think I'll put a regular honeycomb underneath it. So as you can see, once that uh, one of these little pieces flipped up and the head caught it, it, it shifted the whole thing. So I'm going to have to start this one over. Okay, I got a regular honeycomb board underneath it now. Something to keep in mind if you've got little pieces that could drop out when you're using that uh, Atom Stack board. Uh, watch it, you don't have something fall down and get caught in there, and then it'll shift your project and it'll ruin it like it did on that last sheet. So here we go, round two. Okay, there we have it. No bumps or goofs this time. Again, just bang this for anything that wants to fall out. There's ready to fall out. So there's what we have for the Atom Stack A30. We'll get a better view of this here in a bit. Next up will be the Longer Ray 5 with a 20 watt head. Okay, running the same file now on the Longer Ray 5 with a 20 watt head. Um, so what am I using here? This is 8 inch plywood that you, I got in 4x8 sheets from Homely Depot. And we're using the same sheet, or pieces out of the same sheet, for every one of these lasers to kind of keep things apples to apples. All the settings are the same. The only thing that's different is the text at the top which designates which laser it is. Uh, a little bit of a public service thing is that you saw this one here got messed up when the one of these little blocks like this dropped down and stuck up. So it was sticking up out of the wood like this, the laser head come by and hit it and move the project over. Therefore it ruined it. So that's one of the reasons it's nice to be in the area when you are doing a project. You don't have to necessarily stand there and hover right over and look at it, but be in the general area in case something like this happens. I certainly didn't expect this. So we'll let this one here run and we'll take a look at it. And I have 16 lasers. I'm not going to run one of these on all 16 of them. But we're going to do a few here so we can do some comparisons and I'll show you how the different types of lasers differ. Another little public service announcement would be if you are looking at the laser beam, even though it has a shield on it, on the laser head, make sure you wear your protective eyewear. 
because although that there is a shield there and it keeps uh, the majority of the light away if you're going to be staring at that always wear these if I'm just in a general area and I'm not looking at it and just walking around that shield works just fine also if you are doing a mirror or glass always wear these even though you have a shield on there the light that refracts out of that goes all over the place and it can damage your eyes uh, these are made by cloud ray uh, not sponsored I bought these they're not cheap but they fit over my prescription glasses with the proper color for a blue diode laser and they work well there'll be a link in the description if you should decide to get either these goggles they also have regular glasses if you don't wear prescription glasses Okay, the longer is finishing up right here. This is a longer Ray 5, and it's been upgraded to the 20 watt laser head. And we can see what we have here. Cut off the pieces that will fall out. And there's what we have with the 20 watt, and we'll get a closer look at that later. Next will be the Jakota. This here is a Jakota. It is a 10 watt head unit. And again, we're running exactly the same file, exactly the same settings. Uh, exactly the same material. It's on a honeycomb bed. It does have air assist and I've been using the same air assist pump with every laser because we want to keep things an even keel. Apples to apples as they say. Okay, so here's a Jakota. It's finished. Pick this up, knock the loose pieces out. And we'll get the table cleaned off here and we'll do some comparisons between these. Okay, I've done this on six lasers. As I said, I have 16, but I'm not going to do all 16 of them. And one of those is a CO2, which is not like this. In fact, it's not big enough to put one of these in it. So, uh, again, trying to keep everything apples to apples. I'm not trying to promote any particular brand or any particular model. This was just done to show how you can establish your settings. I've got these setting out here in alphabetical order. Did you ever notice the alphabets in alphabetical order? wonder who did that. Anyway, I'm going to get you in close, zoom in on these, we'll take a look at them, and you can take your uh, decisions from there on some of the settings you want to use. This file will be in the description where you can go to our website and download it if you'd like to use it. It can also be scaled down. You don't have to make them this big. That's one other thing I should add here in this whole thing of lasers is with the exception of the longer B1, which is over there, all of these other lasers have a lot of hours on them. In fact, that X-Tool D1 probably has over 100, maybe even pushing 150. The uh, longer B1 is fairly new to me. I probably only got 20 or 25 hours on that one. So let me get the camera turned around. We'll get onto these close and you can have a look. Again, these are what are, I call clean cuts. They're, some of those you could probably push out if you push on them a little bit uh, because they're cut almost all the way through, but I wanted to, again, have everything as uh, comparable as possible. So this first one is the Atom Stack A30 Pro. This is a 30 watt. As you can see, at 100% power, you can go clear up to 80 millimeters per minute. Again, it's 8th inch plywood. Everything is one pass. And of course, focus was set. We do have air assist, honeycomb board under each one of them. Next one here is the Jakota L1. It's a 10 watt laser. So as you can see, it's obviously not as powerful as a 30 watt. But you could take a look at uh, what some of your settings might be. Again, you need to try these on your own material. Don't rely on just what I did here unless you went to Homely Depot and bought this same 8th inch plywood. So there's a Jakota. I'll move over to the longer B1. Okay, this is before I started modifying how my text look, so I made it a little bit easier to read on the other ones. This is the longer B1. They say it's a 36 watt. It actually reads 33 to 36 watt. And as you can see, at 100% power, you can go 900 millimeters per minute and get a clean cut. And it looks like if I just pushed a little bit on that 90% power one, at 900 millimeters, it'd probably pop right out. So, moving down the line, this is the longer Ray 5 with a 20 watt head on it. You can see you can get a cut 
and 100% power at 600 millimeters per minute. Next one over will be the Ortur Laser Master 3. This is also a 20 watt head and as you can see it's pretty much the same as what was on the longer ray 5 with 20 watt head. In fact it is uh, nearly identical. Next one up will be the, and the last one will be the X-Tool D1. So here's the X-Tool D1 10 watt and as I said this one has a lot of hours on it. A, a newer one may uh, cut a little bit better but as you can see a 10 watt is not going to do near what a 20 or 30 watt will do but if this is what you have then this is what you need to work from. So as you can see this varies from laser to laser uh, just because one 20 watt model or 30 watt model cuts one way doesn't mean another model is going to be identical to it and again it also depends on your material. This is kind of an overview of all of them laid out side by side. And these are something you can keep to uh, refer to in the future as again you don't have to make them this big. I made them this big to make it easy to illustrate. So I know I'm going to get asked, well then what's your favorite laser? My favorite laser is the one that works with no problems and all six of these have no problem. Uh, in fact if I have a problem laser I either sell it or I give it to someone a relative to uh, kind of get acquainted with lasers. I, I don't like problems. So these are, have all been problem free. They all work real well. Again not endorsing any brand, not sponsored by anybody here. This is all done on my own. So if you got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Again, there'll be a link in the description and where you can download this test grid. And if you wanted to modify it for fill, you could do that and it's going to take you some time to go down through all the layers, but you could modify it to do fill rather than cut. However, you're going to need to cut back on the power of some of them or you're going to burn holes through your wood. So, that said, thanks for watching. Roger in the shop. We'll see you on the next one.